Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to install multi-ROM on your Nexus 6P here. So all you need to have is an unlocked bootloader and we'll get started from there. So there are a couple of things that you will need to download and to take into consideration. So all the links you can grab from the more info um, or from this XDA developers uh, post here and there's a quick uh, TLDR saying you need to make a backup and then you gotta flash the recovery kernel and then multi-ROM and then report any issues uh, to their GitHub page. So um, we'll just keep going. So it's a uh, very experimental, so not even a beta, I suppose. Uh, there is a step-by-step -step guide on this, but this will be a video. So apparently, um, so yeah, no USB booting for now. And I'll go through adding another ROM and all that. So right now on my phone, I have the stock ROM as my primary. Um, is what we're going to call it. So on the second here, on the second page uh, post, we have the recovery, which is what we need. So I'm just going to right click, open these in a new tab. They might download automatically. Um, you're going to need the multi-ROM installer as well, and a kernel. So what I would recommend is using the Elemental X kernel because uh, apparently this one, they only provide um, the kernel for the February, sorry, January 1st security update, so it's not completely up to date. So I recommend downloading the latest Elemental X kernel for your specific version here. So in this case, mine is mine is running um, on the February update, so probably the latest version of Elemental, the Elemental X kernel, will be good for my uh, good for my phone. So go ahead and download these. So you're gonna have at least three files. And of course, on your phone, you're going to want to have a selection of ROMs to flash. So in this case, I have, if I can quickly browse through. So on my uh, internal memory, I have a folder called ROMs, where I pretty much keep all the ROMs that I like, um, that I've flashed before. And you can see I have the Benzo ROM, um, Super SU's in there, it's Candy 6, Sinanja Mod, and Google Ads Packages, Resurrection Remix, and Exposed. So, there are a few bugs here that uh, apparently installing SuperSU, flashing that through recovery, will um, cause it to go into a boot loop when you try to boot your first ROM. And you don't need a custom, or you don't need a kernel with the hard boot patch um, if you're on your secondary ROMs. So, that's also a good thing. Uh, a little bit rusty on this, so hopefully everything goes pretty smoothly. So currently I have, of course, the stock ROM, like I've said before, uh, running on its February update should be, yep, uh, February security update. Uh, everything's stock, I just have TWRP there, uh, stock boot image. So that's why we're going to flash the kernel as well. So, so far we have three things downloaded here and we are going to copy a couple things to our phones. So just wait till all that is done and um, I'll be back when it's all finished. Okay, so as you can see, everything is finished downloading down here, and I've just gone through the liberty of moving everything into a folder, so it makes it easier to see because my downloads folder is absolutely packed. And as you can see, we have three files here. We have our Elemental X kernel 1.09 beta at the time of recording. There will be and probably be a newer version later down in the future. Uh, this one supports the hard boot patch, and we have our multi-ROM zip here, right there. And of course, our multi-ROM recovery. So, first things first, we're going to grab our USB cable. And with that, we're going to copy uh, the first two files. So our kernel and our multi-ROM installer. We're going to copy that to our device. Plug that in. Plug this in. And of course, uh, when you unlock it, make sure you have um, tap on USB for charging and change it to file transfers. And as you can see, our internal storage has popped up. And I'm going to create a new folder called Multi-ROM. Just to keep things a little bit more organized. All right, so then we're gonna move our zip files from our, uh, these two, the Elemental X kernel and our Multi-ROM. And we're just gonna drag that over so we can copy it to our Multi-ROM folder on our, on our phone. And I forgot to mention at the beginning that you also need the Android Tools or Platform Tools folder, and that just contains our ADB EXE, our two DLLs here, and our fastboot.exe. 
just a little bit further down. Uh, ignore those other folders and other zip files. They're from uh, previous videos. So you're going to have at least those four files there. And that is what we're going to use to flash our recovery. So with that being said, this also requires you to already have your drivers installed, which I assume you have because if you've unlocked the bootloader, you, you've probably done this properly and before as well. So I'm just going to have these two windows open. And right now, we're going to reboot our phone into the um, bootloader. So to do that, you can power off your device. And once that's off, just hold the power button and volume down. And just hold it. until you get into the bootloader, in which you can let go. We'll put that aside so you can see a little green Android guy staring at you. And with the folder, with your ADB and your DLLs and your fastboot EXE, you want to hold shift and right click on an empty space and then click on open command window here. Then you're going to do that. Uh, yours will probably look black and um, white on black. I've chosen to invert this so it's easier to record. And you're going to type in fastboot space flash space recovery space and just leave a space on the end and we're going to drag in our recovery image just like that onto the command window and we're going to hit enter and that will flash our recovery to our phone so once that is done you can pretty much close all this because uh, we'll be going back to our phone and what we need to do is hit volume down twice until it says recovery mode and you're going to hit the power button to boot into recovery. Now this will take a couple of seconds and we'll get into our TWRP multi-ROM edition and we'll start our process there. So you can detach your phone here uh, if you want but you can leave it on to charge uh, which is what I'll do for a little bit and that's cool we have a theme and I like that. So TWRP and of course we have to decrypt our data partition. So this is the new 3.0 TWRP. I was still on 2.7. Oh, can't remember their numbers, but the previous version of TWRP, I can say this is a much uh, much better polished than already. We can see, um, so enter your PIN or passcode or pattern to decrypt the data partition. So down here it even lets you choose what grid size you want. Mine's just the standard 3x3 in a pattern like that, and that'll uh, mount the data partition onto, or just mount it. So here in our fabulous new recovery, we're going to install our kernel first. So tap on install zip, and scroll down until we find the multi-ROM folder, and then tap on the Elemental X 1.09 beta, and just swipe to install. No need to inject multi-ROM for now. So we'll get to our Roma, Aroma installer, we hit next, we're going to hit I agree with terms of use. We're going to hit OK. Uh, change, uh, well, select your settings as you like. I'll leave mine on pretty much all of them default or stock. I won't have any wake gestures. Or I'll have double tap to wake. Um, I don't want sweep to sleep. We'll just leave that there. And we'll hit uh, tap on install Elemental X. Now that we're finished, you can hit next, hit finish, and that'll finish itself up pretty nice. So, I'm going to go back now, and now we're going to flash the multi-ROM installer. So, swipe to install, same thing. That's going to extract everything. You can see we have a progress indication up at the top here, and that has been successful. So, I'm going to hit back, back, and now you can see our multi-ROM menu. We can tap on that now. And we, well, since the 6P only has internal memory, we're going to leave it like that. And we're going to hit Add ROM. Uh, currently, swapping ROMs doesn't work, so don't do that. We're going to hit, we're going to leave these as default. It's an Android ROM and internal memory. We're going to hit Next. And we're going to select a zip file. Or you can choose a backup, or you could sideload from USB. And I'm going to hit Upper Level. Go over to my ROMs folder, as shown in the video before or earlier on. So wherever your ROMs are, doesn't have to be in a ROMs folder. And just for example, I'm going to flash, hmm, how about Resurrection Remix? What's the latest one? 60214, yeah, that one. I'm going to swipe to confirm. 
So this will copy the zip to a temporary directory and then flash it to our secondary ROM place, a little area for it. As you can see, it's going to start its installation, uh, just like any other ROM. So I'll be back when this finishes. Once that is done, you can hit back and hit back again. And now back at our like general multi-ROM menu, you can now see that we have a resurrection remix entry here. You can tap on that and you can pretty much do whatever you want, uh, just as TWRP would be normally for a primary ROM, so the ROM that you were on before. So you can flash an additional zip here, or um, ROM restore con. That is important if your Play Store doesn't work, I believe. So if your Play Store doesn't work properly uh, after booting up and all that, just feel free to reboot back into the recovery, go into the multi-ROM menu, and just select your ROM entry, the Resur Resur uh, Resurrection Remix, and then tap on Run Restore Con. Um, if it works fine, don't worry about it. And if you want to flash your Google Apps, just go here, flash a zip, and we're going to flash our... Actually, I won't, I won't bother flashing gaps on this one, but if you were to flash gaps, um, select your gaps package and flash it as usual. So we're going to hit back and back. Back. And yes, you also have to inject the current boot sector. Uh, I remember that did ask you during the thing, but I forgot about that. So, sorry, you're going to have to go to the multi-ROM, hit up the menu here, tap inject multi-ROM, and then inject current boot sector. And you just want to swipe to confirm. So once that's done, you can feel free to reboot your system, or um, in any case, uh, you can add another ROM, which I'll do just to um, show off how many ROMs you can run on this. And we'll just do a sign engine mod 13. And of course, um, I won't be flashing Google Apps, uh, just to make the system boot a little bit quicker. So that's gonna do its flashing process, and I'll be back when it's finished. So as you can see that we've successfully installed the sign engine mod ROM. As you can see, it also injects the boot image for you. We can now reboot system, and well, I guess won't reboot it all the way, but um, tap on reboot and then tap on system. And then you should see the TWRP, no, my bad, multi-ROM uh, selection menu after this, after this screen. So we'll go ahead and wait for that, which should be pretty soon. Usually starts up pretty quickly. Uh-huh, we need to mount the data partition. So we're going to enter in our uh, pattern here. Okay, so we're going to tap off there so it doesn't boot into the internal ROM, which of course is our stock ROM. Uh, so here we have our multi-ROM menu. So we have our internal, external, and miscellaneous. You can change the color if you like to. And we have our several different reboot options here as well. Uh, USB drive doesn't work currently, so that's alright. So let's just say we're going to boot into Resurrection Remix. I'm going to tap on it twice, and now it's going to boot up there. So, we shall now wait for our Resurrection Remix ROM to boot up. So you can see the whole process. I'll just be fast forwarding the rest of these uh, on its own. So sit back and relax and wait for your ROM to finish booting up as usual. And of course, uh, before I leave, you're gonna have to decrypt your device again. And even maybe select the same ROM. If not, you should see this black screen for a little bit, as if I remember from the HTC One M8 days. Um, we'll be black for a little bit until you see, yep, it's boot logo, or boot animation, and you'll be going through the rest of the normal Android setup. So I'll leave this here, and I'll be fast forwarding until we pretty much get to uh, the home screen with all the icons. Alrighty, so as you can see, that was extremely quick. Didn't even take a minute, so... We have our welcome screen. Got it. Um, slight graphical bug there. Turn off uh, mobile data before it chews it all up. Did you know the keyboard uses about 10 megabytes of data? Uh, it's weird, isn't it? So we'll wait for this to load up. It might be a little bit slow on first boot. Oh, that boot was like, did not take any time at all. Um, Don't worry, it's just, I guess it's just loading all its little things. So you may have to leave it for a while for it to fully boot up and warm up properly. And we'll have a look at Signage Mod a little bit later, once this finishes 
throwing a tantrum. Okay, so I just passed through a Super SU um, response dialogue. Hopefully the settings work now, yep. And so uh, regarding to what I said about not flashing Super SU, most ROMs do include a root solution, such as Super SU, but if you choose to manually flash it, then uh, you'll probably end up with problems. So just don't do that. Uh, as you can see on Resurrection Remix, you already come pre-rooted anyway. As you can see, we're already allowed settings root access once. So we're going to scroll down, go to About Phone. As you can see, we're running Resurrection Remix. So now it's time to take a look at Cyanogen Mod. So we're going to hit Reboot and then just reboot. So while that does its job, I'll go on and talk a little bit about updating ROMs. So when you update a ROM, it's just normal. If you want to take the zip and you want to flash it over the top of your selected ROM that you want to update. So not your internal, so you have to go back into the multi-ROM menu and upgrade your secondary ROM, or one of them at least. So that goes for that, and if you want to update your primary ROM, you will actually have to, for example, it's your stock ROM and there's a new Google factory image, you will need to inject the current boot sector like immediately after it finishes updating, so it can inject itself back into the system and to it, the boot image. And you'll probably need to flash the custom kernel again if you do so choose to flash the stock boot image of course to root it and all that so i'll probably go through that in a different video uh, not one for today and to finish off we'll just boot up signage mod 13. and yeah that goes for updating roms you can read more about it on the uh, xda page if i may bring that up uh, updating and changing roms just follow through that and you'll uh you'll be alright. So that's the warning down there for updating factory images and same goes for um, primary so you're in, I'm gonna say internal ROM and your secondary ROMs. So it's gonna ask again for your password and that's wrong. Alright so now that's gonna boot into signage mod and we'll just wait for that and that will bring us to the end of this video. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too long and hopefully you guys could follow along quite well. Uh, first take of this, so I thought I did pretty well myself. So if you like this video, feel free to leave a like down below, and of course subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos. So I felt a vibration already, so I'm gonna guess it's almost finished booting up, and we'll see Sanjum Mod 13 in the flesh. Alrighty, so and I'll probably show you booting into the um, the primary ROM here. Don't worry, um, that is probably just something to do with the vendor image. And CyanogenMod has its own setup thing, which I don't want them to use my data. And we're going to start. So let's go to its own setup wizard. And we'll, if we take a look at the settings, OTA updates for the custom one. Oops. And as I will show, we are in Simja mod. Where are we? Level, security patch, and of course our Simja mod, Simja mod version. So what it's saying that I've just been using an older one and it's not up to the February 1st security patch. And that's why it gave me the internal error warning. So last thing that I'm going to show off is that I'm going to reboot and just leave a boot to the internal ROM. Sorry, our primary ROM which is our stock 6.0.1. Hopefully you got a glimpse of what it looked like um, before I started the process, so you know I'm actually booting back into my uh, primary ROM. And as you can see, we're booted up and we have everything that we have since we left off. So. That's it for this video guys, like I've said before, you can subscribe if you'd like to, and leave a like down below if it helped you out. And I'll be talking to you guys in the next one.